basically been all the good spirits of history. As, as, the simple, as the simply the age-old practice among philosophers, they all think essentially a star. Of this there's no doubt. Okay, so he's totally disagreeing with the substance of their views. He's praising to the hilt their self-discipline and character um, in, uh, in their pursuit. Uh, so the problem is very simple. He thinks that philosophers in general, and these in particular, uh, use their own categories of value, those that they endorse and those that their society embraces, and project these back on other historical periods where they used and embraced and held different values. Um, so the um, categories of utility, for example, and utilitarianism um, are, Nietzsche thinks, relatively recent developments and trying to think about whether some ancient philosopher was a utilitarian or not is um, absurd. That's not the categories that they use. Um, actually, he says, um, the origin of good is not to be found in um, utility or happiness satisfaction of desires. Actually, he says, good was not used to describe these or even to describe actions. Instead, it was originally used to describe uh, a social rank or status, a kind of person, and a, specifically a kind of person who held a certain social position. So it was used, he says, um, the bottom of 10. It was used to describe the good themselves, that is, the noble, powerful, higher ranking, and high minded who felt and ranked themselves and their doings as good, which is to say, as a first rank in contrast to everything base, low minded, common, and vulgar. Um, so, the contrast between egoistic and altruistic acts that morality designates as good and evil comes much later. So this is only what emerges when uh, aristocratic value judgments based on rank uh, are already in decline. Um, okay, so. Um, So I'll skip ahead um, to section um, four of that, um, where he's giving some um, sort of etymological evidence for uh, good being associated with a certain class, a certain rank, rather than actions. Um, Uh, page 12, then section 4, good is associated initially with higher aristocratic, noble, or privileged classes. And bad is associated with the common pedian or lower classes. Um, and what's, what's important here is that when bad is used in this context, he says there's no um, uh, right at line 20 in section 4 he says uh, it originally, originally designated the plain, the common man as yet without a suspecting sideward glance. There's no suspecting sideward glance concerning those who are bad. In particular there's no blame. There's no blaming that. Um, so he thinks that um, this use of bad and uh, the, the contrasting term good when used in this way 
is not a moral distinction at all. So morality is going to be closely associated with the idea of blame for Nietzsche. Um, so this distinction initially is not part of the moral system of values. Um, now obviously, um, it does involve evaluation. So calling something good and something else bad obviously is ranking those things, obviously is evaluating those things, obviously is putting some things higher than others. Um, but it doesn't mean that we have a system of morality yet. Nietzsche's point is precisely that we have a pre-moral system of values. Um, and you can see this by thinking of calling someone or something bad in this sense is certainly saying that they are worth less than something that's good. There definitely is a ranking here. But you're not saying, when you say somebody is bad in this sense, when they're of a lower class than someone else, they're worthless. But you're not saying that they've done something wrong. You're not saying that they're culpable for their action. Um, so Nietzsche thinks that um, uh, the traits commonly associated with the upper classes come to be called good also. Uh, traits with, uh, associated with lower classes come to be called bad. Um, but it doesn't mean that Again, they've done something wrong, or that what they've done is immoral in some sense. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to say it one more time. So, in this initial form, good and bad are uh, terms of evaluation, but not moral terms of evaluation. They're primarily associated with social class and social position, over which individuals have no choice. They're assigned to these social classes, and um, there's no blaming them for this. They didn't do anything, unless they're more or less valuable. Okay, in addition to the higher, the people of the higher stations calling themselves good, sometimes, especially when they are members of a priestly class, they also call themselves pure. And this draws attention to the fact that they are uh, religious. Um, so members of this higher class often, especially when, they're, especially when they're members of a priestly or religious order, are going to call themselves pure as well. And Nietzsche thinks that we should take this literally. That they are pure because they obey certain kinds of um, rituals of cleanliness. Uh, so this isn't yet that they have metaphysically pure souls or something like this. This just means that they have certain uh, habits of washing or sexual habits that keep them clean. And notice that Nietzsche here doesn't have much sympathy for them. He, he's not you taken by this. Um, uh, he says, um, he says, from the beginning there's something unhealthy in such priestly aristocracies and in the habits ruling them. Uh, so there's something unhealthy in that kind of obsession with cleanliness and purity. But, he says, um, when it's applied to the population as a whole, it's even more disastrous. And the final outcome of this concern with purity is going to be nihilism, is going to be nothingness. Um, so why is that? At the bottom of, you know, there's something unhealthy in the aristocracies, and when this concern for purity is applied to the population as a whole, it's going to lead Nothing. This is the very bottom of page 15. He says, with priests, everything simply becomes more dangerous. 
not only curatives and healing arts, but also arrogance, revenge, acuity, excess, love, lust to rule, virtue, disease. Though with some fairness, he says, um, one could also add that it was on the soil of this essentially dangerous form of human existence this idea of self-denial and purity, concerned with cleanliness uh, and, and purity and self-denial. Um, this is dangerous. This is going to risk having, when spread throughout the society, it's going to risk having all of us turn away from our embodied physical existence to nothingness, to nihilism. On the other hand, he says, this is where we left, where this passage left, left off. Though with some fairness, one could also add that it was on the soil of this essentially dangerous form of human existence, dangerous because it may lead to nihilism, a turning away from our embodied existence. It was on the soil of this essentially dangerous form of human existence, the priestly form, that man first became an interesting animal. That only here did the human soul acquire depth in a higher sense and become evil. And these are, and these are, after all, the two basic forms of the previous superiority of man over other creatures. Okay, so why? So this is um, a crucial point in Nietzsche's attitude toward morality. Because it's this concern with purity that when spread through the society generates a moral system of values. And it's crucial that you see both sides of Nietzsche's attitude toward this. On the one hand, it's extremely dangerous, this system of morality. This is concerned with purity and self-denial and self-sacrifice. It's dangerous because it ultimately is going to lead to nihilism, to a lack of uh, any values in this one and only world. But on the other hand, Nietzsche is very clear here that this turning toward purity, this self-denial and self-sacrifice, what ultimately will be revealed to be the ascetic ideal as part of moral morality. For Nietzsche, this is what gave us depth. This is what made us something other than mere brutish animals. This is what elevated us beyond uh, our uh, previous uh, existence. Um, and this this psychological depth. Uh, for Nietzsche, this is what gives us a will. Uh, this psychological depth is of immense value. It's what makes human beings special. It's what gives us some kind of status that's not merely an animal existence. Okay, um, so I'll stop here. Um, we will um, continue talking about first treatise. So for Wednesday, you should finish uh, the first treatise. I'm guessing we'll actually go until Friday, but uh, we should be done.